Well, hey y'all, welcome to Throttle Power. If you're new here, my name's Tim, and to give you a little update on the channel for about the past month, I have been building three 1940 AMT Ford kits. I, I decided to participate in the Model Car YouTuber Build 40 Ford Challenge, which is any AMT 40 Ford build. And of course, this challenge was put on by Lucas C over at the Lucas C's model car hobby headquarters. And in case you didn't know, this whole challenge started off with a, I'll show you right here from an older video, a box of crap. I have been double dog dared to participate in an AMT 40 Ford challenge. That's right, double dog dared. Well, I said no originally at first because I got rid of both my AMT 44 sedan deliveries. I gave one away in a contest I had and a giveaway, and I sold one just the other month at a model contest I set up for as a vendor. So I didn't have any 40 Fords. No AMTs, no Revels, no nothing. So old Lucas C contacted me and wanted to be in this, and I kept saying no. Oh, he ended up double dog daring me. And he says, if I send you something, will you participate in a challenge? What can you say? So, here's what he sent me. I don't know, it says a box of crap on it. Old Lucas sent me this because I wasn't gonna participate. Well, I decided to participate, and did I not only do the box of crap, but I have built three of them, and this video is showing you my chopped 40 Ford that I built. It started off as a resin body from Jimmy Flintstone and I thought it was going to go pretty easy, but things never go easy, do they? Found out that this 40 resin that I picked up off of Jimmy actually goes onto a Ravel, but I carried on and used the parts from the AMT kit and here's what I come up with. I'll get the camera turned around and we'll go through this build step by step started off with a Jimmy Flintstone resin body and soon realized that this resin body fit the Ravel 40 Ford, not the AMT. So some surgery had to be done. As you can see, I cut off the front fenders and trying to fit this thing on, it just wasn't working. Took the firewall and cut it off the kit body I had to put a firewall onto the resin body. There, I'm cutting it all off. That took a little bit of work to graft the kit firewall onto the resin body, but it's very doable. There, I'm taking some plastic rod and filling those square holes there where the hood would actually go in, because this thing's going to be hoodless. So I wanted a, a clean firewall. And I like to always put the holes in the front end. It gives a little bit of a, a hot rod look to uh, a front end on a car without front fenders. I'm trying to fit it onto the chassis. I do a little surgery on the interior tub too for this here model. Getting everything mocked up. The most important thing on this here build was to uh, get it down low on the ground. I'm starting to mock it up with some tires and wheels. Getting some paint on it. I airbrushed it with the Tamiya Blue. And a little bit of weathering. Now I'm adding some blue glass to it. Cut out some blue glass and put it in. Then I added some Mexican seat blanket to the front seat. That's just an overall view of uh, working on actually all three of them. And there is the kit that I robbed the engine out of. Stripped off all the chrome, getting it all put together. This 
swap the transmissions because the uh, kit, that kit transmission wasn't going to fit in this one. A little bit of paint and work. More work on the engine. Oh, and notice the oil filter. See how the sticker on the oil filter is upside down there? little pet pee of mine that I see at a lot of model contests, guys will have that flipped around and on a real oil filter, just right here, that's how they come. So when you take that oil filter and flip it up to screw it on, it's going to be upside down. A little bit of engine and wiring, getting the engine put in. And I quickly found out that the engine's going to stick out too far, so I had to lengthen the frame rails. So I cut off the front horns and angled down and added that, those pieces on to lengthen the frame rails. And these are wood lights. You ever seen a wood light before? I think they are my, actually my very favorite light. William G. Wood invented that light, and he filed for a patent in 1928. They've been around that long. And the wood light would become a standard piece on the 1930 Jordan Speedway Ace Roadster and on Ruxton's. And they would also be on all your Art Deco cars in the 30s, such as Stutz's, Cords, Packard's, Duesenberg's. Just beautiful light, beautiful light. I think they're really cool, and I wanted to put one on this hot rod, or set on this hot rod. There's the car all done. You can see I added the exhaust soot on the sides. It was a fun build. Really enjoyed this. There's a really neat shot of the Mexican seat blanket. Let me know down in the comments below what you think about this thing. I thought it turned out pretty cool for a down and dirty hot rod. Well, hey, what'd you think about that build? I thought it was pretty cool. I love that chop look. Hot rod chop, down and dirty. Really neat. We'll see you on the next video on Throttle Power.